Welcome to At Home with the Johnsons, with me, Lisa. And me, Sam. We're going to be discussing a load of different issues about having a multi seven figure business and what life is like. So we'll be talking life and we'll be talking a bit of business, but we'll also be talking some controversial topics, but we want you to get involved too. Because we do love a debate. We love a debate. And if you want to get involved in the debate, you can join us on our Facebook group at Home of the Johnsons. All right. All right. I'm all right. Good. We're going to talk today about something that might be controversial, which is because it always is whenever I talk about it for some reason, which is spirituality and sort of the woo side of business. Can we, does that include religion? Kind of, but I want to do a whole one on religion because we have a lot of thoughts on that. Okay. But our background... Can you see how well prepared I am for this? <laughs> I, think we, I think we need context of our background because I oh. think the reason we have the thoughts around spirituality that we do is because of our backgrounds, because we both grew up very, very religious. We did. My mum and dad were kind of a, a kind of religious circle, sunny and share of the 70s. Yeah, they had records, didn't they? Two records been released. We used to get royalty checks from them still. What are they called? What, my mum and dad? I know they're dead, but what were they, they called were in called, this band? Well, they were called the Johnsons. So it was Peter Smith and the Johnsons, Arthur and Judy being my mum and dad. And, um, yeah, they used, they used to play quite big sort of religious festivals around the country, sometimes further away. Were you in any of these records? Yeah, no, not on the records. I get a mention in the, in the blurb on the... I thought album. you were on stage playing some tambourine I have, or I something. have played a kazoo with them on stage, yeah. My, my brother mind. played the guitar. I wasn't old enough to play the guitar at that point. So you were very religious? Very religious. Um, bless them, though. I, so I used to go to Sunday school and all of that. My, yeah. They were in the choir and et cetera, et cetera, quite heavily involved. But they, they stopped me having to go to church when I was about eight because they realised how much I love football. And I'm so quite grateful to them because of that, because most, I think, very religious families would not have let anything come in the way of going to church. Which is really interesting, because my parents did the same. So my mum and dad split up when I was about 11, mm. and my dad was, he's Maltese, so he was very Catholic, as all Maltese people are, and then he became a Mormon mm. through the, you know, the year of, you have a, I think when someone leaves you, you're in a position where you are open to anything that gives you some kind of hope and that's when he found the church and so we became Mormons like me and my brother and sister well not my brother but me and my sister and so I had this then very religious almost courtish upbringing um, where you know you can't drink tea or coffee you can't drink alcohol you have to wear certain clothes you can't even think bad thoughts like everything is about the devil getting you in some way and so I think that has had an effect on me now, A, not believing in very much. When I hit 18, I was like, hold on a minute. Because when people who are really religious believe in religion, they believe in it. They teach it in such a way that when I was a kid, if someone said, like, there's an afterlife and there's a God, it would be the same as saying that's a table. Yeah, yeah. It's not like some people believe. It's like this is a thing. I, I was the same. So then as I grew up and realised in my late teens, that not everyone thought this way, actually. There were people thought there might not be anything. Then I started to become very scientific and very logical and reading up on everything, and that's when I started to believe less about this kind of spiritual yeah. side. For all of our differences, this is one thing we share, a very similar story, don't we? Because I was exactly the same. I was just, it was it just what it was. There was heaven, there was God, this is how it worked. You did good things, and that's how it worked out. And then I got to probably about the same maybe sort of early teens. I remember lying in bed thinking, but this doesn't make any sense. And then my rational kind of practical brain kicked in and went, well, it doesn't make any sense because it's not true. And so therefore, and I think that then, from that period on, started to nip into my belief in anything spiritual. Me too, but I'm a researcher. Oh, like, exactly. yeah, I no. won't... Like, when people said to me about The Secret which in business was the first thing someone mentioned to me, you need to manifest stuff, read the secret, you'll see. I didn't just read the secret and then go, oh, that must be true then. I went and spent a year studying everything to do with manifestation and spirituality because I need to get to the bottom of where it all comes from and why people believe things. And so when people say to me, oh, you just don't understand it, it always makes me laugh because I have studied it probably more than most, most people Most people in don't, industry. do they? This is the trouble. No. Uh, and I think the accessibility of knowledge online has only escalated this. People get, 
you know, a little snippet of information and then immediately to them, that's the truth. That's Here's the what's truth. weird about you. So I've, because I've done a year. Just the one thing. Just the yeah? one thing. Okay. I've done a year of spirituality. So at the beginning of 2024, <laughs> I said to my audience, I am going to open myself up to spirituality and I'm going to write a diary about it called The Woo Diaries. And every month or so, I'll give you an update on what I've tried and what's happened. And I've done everything, like everything from mediums to past lives remote to remote reiki remote reiki you loved that one didn't you <laughs> all of these different things and it has it's not changed my mind about spirituality but some weird stuff has happened that has made me be slightly more open to maybe i don't understand everything. i love your openness because in everything in life you are very much a case of okay well, let's investigate it. Let's let's see what it's all about. And you're not going to close anything off no. without a good checking it yeah. out. And there are some things in this year of learning spirituality that I've definitely closed off that are a load of rubbish. And there are some things that I just can't explain and so I don't know and I'm not going to close it off. Um, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But one of the things that I think is really interesting about you is that you are really into weird stuff. Like... You, the, your biggest goal in life is that aliens take you. Oh, my God, yeah. Honestly. I, when I was a kid, right, I, used to, I got eczema, but weirdly it came in like little circular patches. Like, you know, I still get it sometimes now, yeah. like little circular patches. And rather than thinking I've got eczema, I thought I'd been taken in my sleep by some uh, aliens or and, probed. and probed. And these were the, the marks made by the probes. I genuinely believed it. And I, you know, I, I would. Why did you? I don't, the first thing my mind thought of was, oh, it must be an alien, it must be a spaceship. Not, oh, it's probably a bit of eczema, let's get some cream for that. It was literally, I thought. You had all those comics oh, about no, like comics. weird the, mystery the things. The Unexplained magazine, um, yeah. which had issues and issues, hundreds of them. I had everyone in the binders, you could get the binders oh, from. So you really are anti spiritual. Like, if I even talk about, oh, well, this happened or whatever, you're oh, like, you just cut me down straight know. away. But the thing is. I feel we, a bit bad about that, to be fair. You should. I, and. <laughs> why? <laughs> and we went to Orkney where there were some stone circles. Oh, yeah. And you kind of went a bit weird Up and spiritual. I, I, um, I feel, I don't, I can't explain the stone thing. Because there's something hugely powerful about those stones. And there I isn't. I went near them. I put my hand on it. Nothing happened. I was <laughs> arms round it. It's massive. Far, far, part of it is the logistics of even getting them there and doing it. There's, there's an incredible I get fascination that. Like the with history that. of like how the hell did it These things weigh get tons. There. They didn't even have the wheel. You know, how did they get them there and put them there? And they're all aligned with the summer solstice and other stuff like that. How did they know all this stuff? That's the first part. But there is something about it. But you um, don't believe in oh, that stuff, but there's off. something about it. I, I think, think you've cut it off. Maybe you've cut it off because an alien did take you. I, I wish that was true. And maybe they made your brain. Wiped it all out because I'm getting too close to the truth. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what, there's a book in that, isn't there? There might be a book in that. Um, but I, I'm fascinated how you believe this weird stuff, and yet when I had past life therapy, and I was told that I was... As is to be expected, a very powerful shaman. A shaman, weren't you? Yeah. Who connected people through the ley lines of the earth. I didn't even know what a ley line was. You did. I knew all about ley lines. I've got a load of books about them. But you didn't believe it. I'm sort of a bit of a contradiction here, aren't I? Yeah. I don't, I think subconsciously or semi consciously, if that's the thing, I stopped myself from believing in it when I got to a certain age. I think I saw people dying, grandparents, whatever. And I thought, well, that's not fair. And I, and I sort of thought, if this bad stuff can happen, other stuff in my life, which I, wasn't great, and I thought, if this bad stuff can happen, why would there be anything other than the, the nuts and bolts of reality? Why would there be anything underlying that. that this is what happens? So I think that's probably what happened. And I agree that part of me still yearns for this weird stuff. It definitely does. Like, we both are like want something weird to happen all the time. Like, we only watch films about Armageddon. We love we love Armageddon films. We love <laughs> like, paranormal films. If we're in a car going down the street, we both sometimes look at each other and we go, wouldn't it be really good if, like, a massive Godzilla foot just, like, came down right there in front of the we car? We told the boys, and they're like, yeah, but then we might... Die. Like, die. We're like, yeah, but imagine it. Or if when we're on the beach, imagine one coming up out of the water. Yeah, I'd love just that. a giant thing, like, stomping towards you. I'd love that. I oh, know, I would. So, but we don't really believe in spiritual stuff. 
But then this year has kind of been a very strange year for me because all the way throughout my whole life, I've been told I am psychic from many different people, many different people I that I've met. I stop myself rolling my eyes. I know you Even did. the word psychic. Why did it do it to you? I don't know. <laughs> Oh, yeah, carry on. Sorry. To be fair, I still don't really believe in it, but there is no getting away from the weird things that have happened this year. So the, one of the first times that our, somebody told me I was psychic, first of all, Marie, my sister who works with us, said that I used to see dead people like constantly when I was a child. Like not in a scared way, you know, I can't get to sleep because that family is sitting on the end of my bed way. And I'd describe them in great detail and she'd be like, Mom, Lisa's doing that weird thing again. So that used to happen. But then at... My Hindu for wedding number could be two. I think it's two. Sorry. Well, it wasn't three, was it? Well, no, because that was ours. I think it has to be two because one, you didn't really have a Hindu, did you? Because you just went well, and lived on a 17. chicken farm. And then two. Yeah, it was number two. And I'm three. So then we got these two houses in Brighton that were really old, like next to each other. And we all stayed in one house. And in the other house, Marie hired a medium to do, we're like, we'd cross over in the top of the house. You could cross up the stairs to the other house. And we used to do that, and there was a medium there. And everyone went and had their go, and it was like a bit of fun, and then we'd all drink. And I, from the minute I got in the room, I always say to you, I can feel weird things in rooms, intuition, whatever it is. But I felt something on the stairs, and I was proper creeped out by the stairs. And I kept saying to her, oh, I can't go near them stairs. And then... I went into the other room and the psychic was there and she went, oh, you don't really need me, do you? And I was like, what? And she was like, well, you're one of us. And I was like, no, I'm definitely not, mate. And she was like, no, you are. You're just trying to block it out. I was like, I'm not. This is stupid. And I went to go back, it, back <coughs> it through the door and she went, so what about Michael on the stairs then? What do you have to say about that? And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And she was like there's a guy on the stairs that's been trying to talk to you because he knows that you can hear him since you got here and you've just completely ignored him. Oh, my blood went cold. I don't know what you're talking about. Bye, drink. Like, go and have another drink. But it, it always kind of stayed with me. And then since then, I've been around because of the industry I'm in. Lots of my clients are, are mediums. Lots of my clients are psychics and that kind of thing. See, I nearly did psychics um, with my little two air fingers. And... Um, and they've all said to me, you know, you are. I had a palm reading, what, last week as part of the Wu Diaries experiment. The first thing that was on there was like, oh, you've got the whatever line, fire line or whatever it is. You're, you have a very special psychic uh, spirituality gift. And I'm like, nah. And I just keep saying no to it because... But you're closer. You're Wu adjacent, we could say, I think. Whereas I'm... You're very not. Wu but I, I'm closer this year than I've ever been, simply because things started to happen, and you've seen it happen, so you can't, like, say I can didn't. usually rationalise them, though. What? Give, let's talk about one example of a thing that's happened. Oh, when I started writing stuff down that I didn't really understand, and then I gave it to somebody, and they said, oh, yeah, that's the sales page I was looking for. I think you're just like Darren Brown. I think you're intuitive, and you um, absorb more about people. Funny you say that, because... I then went to see a therapist because I was so scared of all this. I kept having flashes of what people, what had happened to people or like a message that I was supposed to give to someone, which is ridiculous. And I thought I was making it up in my own head. But every time I told it to the person, they'd be like, oh, yeah, I really needed that, which I thought was weird. I wrote one and you said it was about you. It was, but the reason you didn't think it was about me because it said you wrote down it was a musician and you didn't equate that word with me, it's did not you? not you. You're not a musician. Kind of. <laughs> so you were just like, that's about me. I was like, what? Musician. It's about a musician. Not, yeah, that was really harsh. <laughs> so I went to this therapist and the therapist said, which I like because it goes back to science, where does spirituality start or psychicness start? An actual intuition because you needed it when you were younger. And because when I was younger, I had to be very perceptive on what adults around me what mood they were in, what yeah. they were thinking, what had happened to them, because then I knew how to act. Otherwise, yeah. it was dangerous. And so because of that, she said, you've probably picked up an ability to really understand deeply people and their thoughts and emotions. And maybe everyone could do that, but you've been able to unlock that part of your brain to be able to do it because you needed to. Yeah. And that's just carried on. And some people might call that psychic, M might just be intuition. I much prefer that. 
Like, I'm just intuitive. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I think that that's probably it because I love Darren Brown and what he does. And when he explains how he does it and he, and he calls out people who say they're their psychic or whatever. Well, he did that brilliant experiment, didn't he? Yeah. I, I love that mean, experiment. Yeah. Like, he put... He got all these people and um, gave them... He gave all these mediums, or they were pretend mediums, I think, and they gave them a reading. And then they wrote the reading out and they gave it to him. And all these people in the room, there's about 100 of them, they're mm. all crying, going, oh, my God, you should see mine. It's exactly right. I can't believe that yeah. anyone could possibly have known this. And then he got to the front of the stage and he said, I want you to all know one thing. They're all exactly the same. Yeah. That's really clever because it's what and you it's read like, into it. Everyone can find a pan. Everyone can find s something yeah, yeah. that they believe is for them. And so with these messages, I'm like, but are people just saying, oh, yeah, that, that makes sense to me because anything can? I don't know. I'd like to believe it more well we'd both like to believe in spirituality and religion because we need there to be an afterlife because our only phobia in the world apart from spiders for me is death yeah um i i would i would like to believe it more i'd like to believe there is more to it but i feel my mind is pragmatic and practical and logical and and if i can't see a, a reason for something then then i'm not gonna i'm not well, gonna lots believe. of um more woo people, more spiritual people would tell you that a lot of the stuff like, I don't know, manifesting, law of attraction stuff, is actually scientific. They call it quantum physics. I've looked into that and there's a lot of red flags. But this is the problem with me again. Like, they'll tell me it's, it's quantum physics and I'll go, oh, that's science. I'm going to look into that. Yeah. And then I'll read it and go, this is not science. But that's not a problem with you. That's a problem with people not doing the due diligence when they're talking about something to understand what they're really talking about. Whereas that is what you do. I think spirituality, <laughs> law of attraction, manifestation is just another faith system, just like religion yeah, is. Yeah. And so it's good that people believe in it. I think it makes them do more when they 100%. believe in it. hundred percent. And I, and I Hope feel it's not that, a bad thing. No, that faith is definitely not a bad thing, and it brings a lot of solace and a lot of comfort to a lot of people. So who am I to, to belittle that or criticise that? I'm it's like, when it goes the other way. So the reason that I started being very anti woo in this entrepreneurial journey that I'm in is I started to see people say things like, well, if you knew how to manifest properly or if you wanted it enough, it would just happen for you. Like, Darren Brown writes in Happy, one of his books, yeah, great, that yeah. he knew a woman whose child died of cancer and people were saying, well, you didn't want it cured enough. You could have manifested it away. And that's just wrong. Mm -hmm. That's just, that's the first kind of... Uh, the first kind of entry point I had into manifestation in the entrepreneurial world were these stories. And I was like, how can this be a good thing? How can this be right? This is just conning people. Yeah. Like, I remember once this coach online. It, do you remember when Grenfell happened? Yeah. And, like, the course, building yeah. burnt down? Yeah, absolutely. And I knew people who lived in that area. I knew people that were suffering because their families had died in that building. And someone wrote on online... If you understood how the law of attraction works, you would really understand why that happened and why they made it happen to themselves because they were so negative because they were poor. Oh dear! And oh that dear. really pissed me off. Well, I think it would piss off most people who believe in this kind of stuff as well because I don't believe most people would would agree with that kind of approach. Surely not. If this is a a, a spiritual kind of healthy kind of way to be, is it though? Is I don't it know. spiritually that most healthy? Most people would say that, that, that it was. I don't know. It's a big subject though the spirituality thing because it encompasses so many different realms there's, there's there's what i would call slightly more out there stuff which like palm reading and tea leaves well, you didn't reading. believe when i when i did this experiment i had the distance reiki that one i mean i don't know who did it bless her i'm sure she's really good and believes wholeheartedly in what she does but she basically over the phone right well not even over the, over phone. the phone told you at 7 30 p.m on a wednesday night to lie down and she would then from scunthorpe or wherever she was like work remotely on reiki in reiki -ing? reiki -ing you yeah and like then, sending oh. energy and then after the hour she rang me and said how do you feel and i was like well i'm, I'm a bit calmer but that's because i've just gone to you're sleep for down, half an hour yeah. um i just and pictured her watching curry for half an hour while you're lying there and then saying 100 quid please well it's good passive income well, it is I'm absolutely right as long as there's always people susceptible to that and going to pay the money that was the weirdest one yeah i had lots of other things i did biomagnetism I was annoyed by the past life situation because I had it in my head, I've always had it in my head. Look at my fringe. I am Cleopatra. How was I not Cleopatra? Like everyone else oh, is Cleopatra the when they go to better. a past life. Everyone. The shaman one was interesting. And this is where it did. Oh, let me rewind on that. I find it 
tricky to believe people doing stuff for you because you're a quite well-known person. If we got someone that had never heard of you to do a reading on you or something, I would be much more likely to believe it. I get that. But so like the shaman one, apparently they put you on a cross and sliced yeah, you they open gutted me. and gutted you. Because and that's was, why you have... Do you know these... why they did it? I like this bit more. I only remember the good bits. Like, I was why a powerful they shaman. It? They did it because... I was a rebel and wouldn't listen to the authorities. I took that bit on. So they thought they'd gut you. Yeah, so then they like, I wouldn't listen to them. They didn't want me to help people. I could heal people, yeah. obvs. And so they then put me on a post and gutted me. And that's why I have health issues with my stomach. Apparently so, yeah. But the problem is, I liked all of it until at the end, she said to me, you have over a million different lives. This is just one that's causing issues. Mm. How am I supposed to get through all of them to know what's causing issues to what? It's pointless. I'm never going to get to a million stories. It's always stories. the more dramatic ones that are raised as well. They wouldn't say, oh, you were just a housewife in the 1950s and he died age 60 and did That's what I life. meant about the Cleopatra thing. Like, everyone's Cleopatra apart from me. Everyone's Cleopatra or they're Henry VIII or, or they're Anne Boleyn or they're, or they're, I don't know, yeah. And I wasn't. And I was a bit annoyed You had by an that. interesting spirit guide, though, didn't you, in one of your other experiences? Yeah. So I liked that. So I was quite enjoying the whole... She said that what she was going to do is call on my spirit guides to talk to me. And I was up for that. So she did that and she said, oh, they're, they're next to you. They're beside you. One is a grandparent. All right, I don't know any of my grandparents really, but I'll have her. So she's there. And then she said, oh, and remember, I just want to go back a bit here because in this same situation, she had told me that, Something can happen to me, probably of a sexual abuse nature, under the age of two, that I couldn't obviously remember, and that that was probably something that had happened to me. And so, and also something to do with the church, something had happened to me. It all sounded a bit in the sexual abuse realm from what she was saying. I it's don't know. It was unsettling. It was that. unsettling, but I was okay with it because I was like, it probably didn't, also. Mm. Like, so. Anyway, she was saying all of this, and then she gave me these spirit guides. And the first guide was... Your nan or My whatever. nan, or a grandparent yeah, of some yeah. kind. And then she said, oh, the second one's famous. And I was like, oh. She said, I said, does that happen often? She's like, yeah, it's quite rare. And I was like, oh, like, I've got a famous one. So in my head, I'm going, Elon Musk. He's not dead, though. Or his granddad or someone. You like Henry someone Ford or yeah. Walt Disney or something like Obviously that. Obviously, it was going to be someone like that who's my guide. No, no, this is who it was, Michael Jackson. Yeah, Michael Jackson helping you You're out You're giving there. me Michael Jackson to help me out with an issue that might involve some form of... Just to say... It was never proven, blah, blah, blah. With your lawyer head on, nothing's been proven about Michael Jackson. I'm saying that, I'm saying there's tenuous links. She may as well have said Jimmy Savile's on the other side. <laughs> I'm not sure that's the same thing. I wasn't happy with Soz. it. I don't want Michael Jackson No, I wouldn't want him. Apart from anything else, he'd keep doing little moonwalks and like he hees and stuff when he's trying to guide you. I'm not sure that would work out so well. <laughs> it's just annoying. I wanted it to be someone better, so now I don't believe it. Who would you have picked? I don't know. Someone like really on... Someone like... Is Aaron Brockovich dead? Albert Einstein. <laughs> mm. He's not entrepreneurial, but he's very clever. What about one of the Wright brothers? Because if they were aeroplanes, I'd rather been have a female. But your life would be rubbish if it were all oh, like Mary Curie or someone like that. Yeah, so how many people have she's cured? Yeah, one of them. All right, but not Michael Jackson. No, thanks. fair play. So yeah, that didn't go down well in the end. I'd want George Best. Why? Or a footballer. How are you going to learn anything from oh, Just the stories you could tell. Do you get to chat with your spirit guys, or are they just literally just? They're just sort of telling you what to do. I think. Right. I don't know. She didn't really say. If I could have a chat, I'd have George Best. I feel like this is going to get onto the who would you have at your dinner party chat. Oh, that's enough. Yours changes every time. We could do that. Anyway, so <laughs> what are we going back to? The spirituality. <laughs> <laughs> I get so distracted and taken away. And we talk about my brain, my attention span being rubbish. Basically, here's what you need to do. Be I'll, more open. Shall I? Maybe I should start my own like woo diary You should journey. do it for a year. You never know. Oh, what if you I can't even imagine... Out? As soon as someone started to say, I'd be like, yeah, nice one. Of course, I know, yeah. you would be like that. That would be My the horrible problem. smug face on. Yeah, you w that annoys nice me when one, you do that. Because yeah. when I was having all those experiences, I was quite open to it. Like, I didn't know whether it was true or not. I still don't really think I I'm psychic. I need to reconnect 
with my pre-teen self. Yeah, because the maybe... The read every unexplained magazine. What if an alien is watching you now going, well, I would have taken him, but he didn't believe in anything, he's going to be useless? I, I think my belief system works differently for extraterrestrials to it does for woo. Oh, so you're more... You believe in aliens. I think there's more scientific base to that. If you ask, what's his name, the bloke out of D-Ream, Brian Cox, if you ask him, I he will tell you that with the billions and billions and billions of planets in, in every galaxy, there is going to be another planet with someone on it. Why are they green, though? They're not green. That's just perpetuated by Hollywood and 1950s sci-fi You don't comics. know they're not green. You've not seen one. You don't know that. They're more likely to be totally unrelated to anything that we could even imagine. They might not even have a physical form. Maybe. If you do this woo experiment, right, I like I did... I'm going to do it. You, we could take you to all the places where the stone suits... Because that seems to be to where you're connected to things. And maybe you could meet some mediums there. No, because... All right, yeah, OK. Well, I think I know why you're anti it. Go on. If you anything like the religion I was in when I was younger, if you start meddling with this kind of stuff, it was seen as, like... Proper witchcraft and the devil Mormon, will get though, you. But, however, we weren't allowed to do Halloween for Same. that very reason. If there was anyone on the telly talking about any kind of... Like Ouija to do board with the devil, or stuff. Or, yeah. My dad would unplug the telly... In case it gets Because he said it would get in Same. through that. So if you're psychoanalysing me, that's probably right, isn't it? You had that experience you were telling me about. Oh, my days, yeah. Tell about that. Because that, that's right, point, you don't believe in spirituality and then this happened to you. This was like a major thing and it's not like you were a little kid, you were 16. I was about 15, 16. My dog used to sleep in my bedroom with me. I'd just gone to sleep and then he jumps up and starts growling and the hairs are up. He was quite a chill dog, he's quite old. And the hairs on the, were standing up and I'm like, what's going on here? And I looked over at the door and I saw the doorknob turn him and I thought, oh, it's my dad or something coming in. I'd just ignore it. And then I looked, so I kind of went back to go to sleep I looked up again and the door was opened and in the door was this figure, quite tall, six foot plus, wearing white clothes, all white, with a stripy black and white T-shirt on randomly. Like from France? <laughs> like from France or, or a sailor. And, um, and, he, and I went, oh, come on. And meanwhile, the dog was going skits, like jumping around, barking, running backs and forwards. And then, and then I thought, this is ridiculous. I said, shut up, Rex. I said, go sleep. And then, and then I looked back and this thing was leaning over me. What, to like strangle With his hands over, like, coming towards my neck like that. It didn't have any eyes. It had like, black holes where the eyes should be coming in like that for me. You were dreaming then, right? Who knows? Well, it's like the, the, the thing you get. Um, sleep paralysis. Yeah, maybe. Oh, I hate um, sleep paralysis. Uh, and anyway, so then I started screaming. And my dad comes running in. Oh, what's going on? What's going on? And I said, oh, there's someone in the room. And he's like opening the cupboards and all that. Um, and there was no one there. But the weird kind of add-on to this story is, quite recently, I, yeah. I, I saw a thing, and there's this thing called The Entity, which is a, a, a kind of myth, a legend, or whatever you want to call it, in all countries around the world. The Japanese have got one that's got its own name. In Scandinavia, there's one. In South America, there's one. In Africa, Here we call one. it The Entity. And here it's called The Entity. And quite often, they happen to teenage kids, and generally, the ones in Europe are wearing white clothes... With black white sides. faces and black eyes, like holes for eyes. And you told me about this, and I was like, yeah, right. So I researched it, and it was 100% true. It's like, it's, so it, many it people thing, see yeah. this thing. So, uh, I, I mean, that was when I was 15 or 16, and that... So how can you not believe in, like... Because... Weird sleep stuff. Sleep paralysis, probably. A dream, probably. We do like to rationalise Because the thing is, I say about the dog barking, but he probably picked up on me. No. Dogs are really clever about sense and motions. You see all the stuff they could do. So he probably just picked up on me, and that's what made him bark. When I got angsty, that made him worse. Except you do believe it, because when I met you, you slept with a pillow on your head. Stayed with me a long time. <laughs> I still do sometimes. Yeah, you do. I sort of, uh, yeah, yeah. Just because it would protect me from the, the, the entity coming to get me. That's like when people have covers on, and they go... I can't put oh, my leg out oh. because a monster will get me. Like, it's going to get you through the cover, mate. It's not going to well, stop it. Well, just a slight 
diversion here. You won't lean your other pillow against the bed because you said it creates a spider ramp. It's a ladder for, the... <laughs> for spiders to get to me. Why would you do it? It's Here's like the asking thing, like, for trouble. But spiders can climb walls. Why do you think they need you to make a ramp? They'll just climb up the side of the bed, mate. They're not going to go up a, a ramp for them. No, but it's like making it even easier oh, for them. Oh, I may as well oh. put a little sign going, spiders come here. I don't think they can read either, to be honest. <laughs> Um, anyway, yeah, so that was a weird story, uh, and it... I think, here's my psychoanalysis of him. you. I think you 100% believe in all of this stuff, and because you believe in it, you're scared that if you were to admit to that and open it up, you'd see some shit that you don't want to see. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to... But the trouble is, as we said before, I will try to open up to it, but it's like me saying, right, I'm now, because I'm scared of death, I'm going to go to church and believe in God and religion. You can't you make can't yourself. You can't flick that switch. No, because we've tried because to do that. Because you know you're going to be conning yourself. So, um, but I would like to try. But I did try all year and I'm still not there. It's still not really worked. Things, if mine can be earth energies, I'm it sort can of be that. halfway to that already. It can be earth energies. Ley lines, stone circles. All I tried it all power. year and I thought by the end I'd be very open to it. All that's happened is a lot of weird stuff. But now when people talk to... Uh, even now, if people say to me, oh, yeah, what you need... So I was ill someone said oh what you need to do is do this you stand up and you ask your body like oh what is wrong with me is it this and if your body goes forward then it is it is and if it goes back it's not and I was like I don't really believe anything you're saying and if I was open to it surely by now I'd be like all right I'll give that I'll do that I think that you are a great case study because of your level of research that you do and everything you take part in so that means you are going to look at the science. And I think there's that thing, as Sherlock Holmes said, when you've exhausted all of the possible explanations, the one that remains is the most likely or something, the simplest one is the most likely or something. I think that's what you do. It is you what I do. You eradicate all of the far-fetched stuff. And if occasionally you arrive at a place where you go, do you know what, I can't really find a rational reason well, for this. Well, that is what's happened to, to some of the psychicness that's happening. And also the fact that I can really tell if someone's died in a house. I can tell if something bad's happened in a room. I can. I can feel it. Well, I'm quite... I'm, I'm into that. I quite like that. But you don't believe in it, but you're into it. I don't know. It could just be energy. You know... I like energy. That's the one thing be, I do believe it in. It doesn't have to be the spirit of a person who died and then just hangs around it like Beetlejuice. It could just be their energy, it, it isn't it? Like be Beetlejuice? Like, in, yeah. That's not really the kind of spiritual... I, that's not real. Sometimes people say it's an imprint of the energy, don't they, where they're just there. That's why they're wandering around. Yeah. I know it's not real. I know, but you picked us back to the future. all the different kinds of spirits and ghost movies that you could have picked. You picked Beetlejuice. It's the one I saw most recently. That and Sixth Sense. We won't even go there. I think we've gone to enough places, haven't we, in this we one? Have, we have. Let's end. Shall we end? <laughs> and I will make a commitment to shave off some of my cynicism. And if you are listening to this, come to the Facebook group at Home of the Johnsons and tell us what you believe in. There's going to be no judgment. That's not true. No. There might be some judgment, but we still want you to tell it's us. judgment done in a friendly way. Yeah, it's friendly judgment. Anything goes, really. Like yeah. this. You can Anything say whatever goes. you want. Yeah. You've been listening to At Home with the Johnsons. Why not come and join the discussion at our Facebook group, At Home with the Johnsons? Go and check the link in the show notes.